This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the ASUS ROG Strix SCAR 17. Again, we reviewed this a couple of months ago, but there's something important and different inside. Inside, we have the AMD Ryzen 9 7900HX3D. The X3D processor has been in desktops with AMD, but this is the first time it's in mobile. We're going to look at it now. So AMD says that this revision to the processor, which basically, if you're not familiar with X3D vCache, is basically a doubling of the level three cache size, a little bit more direct connection, copper to copper, as they say, to speed up any application or game that, well, makes a lot of use of the level three cache. They say this can mean around 15% CPU performance improvement on average. And it's gonna, again, depend on the application that you're using the game, all that sort of thing. And for gamers, particularly where the GPU is a bit more important than the CPU, especially the higher resolution you go, the more of a difference it makes. At 1080p is where you get the most bang for your buck over for CPU upgrades because the CPU is usually doing the most work. As you go up in resolution, it becomes more demanding of the GPU. So this ASUS is a QHD resolution. So that's a good 2K resolution display there. So that's a balance between. So you'll still see some improvement potentially from a processor improvement CPU. But if you're going all the way up to 4K, then it's all about the GPU at that point. So yeah, so potentially a good fit. One thing that is probably going to seem a little bit weird, and I don't know, is ASUS treating AMD like second-class citizen just a little bit? Uh, if you know by now that with the SCAR 17, this is the kind of more old-school design. It has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display. If you go with the SCAR 18, you get the 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. The chassis on this is a metal lid, and most of the rest of the casing is plastic on it. So uh, for something that is a super flagship, first of its kind processor, it's too bad we couldn't see it actually going into it. Even more flagshipy laptop. On the other hand, that helps keep the price less insane. Its predecessor, that again, that we reviewed very recently this year um, was about 3,500 bucks. And this one, maybe I'm not sure the pricing isn't officially out yet, as far as I can see, might be a hundred or $200 more for a premium, but still with today's crazy laptop prices, that laptop with a 4090, RTX Pro, a GPU inside, 175 watt. That's not too bad. You also get 32 gigs of RAM. It's DDR5, 4,800 megahertz. Surprised it didn't go with 5,200 megahertz, but no. And a very fast one terabyte SSD. You've got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3. And this is a per key RGB keyboard. It's not mechanical, but it feels almost like a low travel mechanical keyboard. It's so tactile. It's one of my favorite keyboards. I'm not gonna go super in detail reviewing the entire laptop because we have and there'll be a link in the description so you can see our review of the previous model which is the same except for the CPU. In fact, the display is even the same. Though sampling differences from one to another, this one's actually a little bit brighter than the previous one that we had. So yeah, look at the draw there. Not a huge difference. You get the idea. Also 90 watt hour battery inside, which is nice. So you know you can say, well geez, gaming laptop with a huge chassis like this. It's not that huge, folks, especially if you look historically at what gaming laptops look like even four or five years ago. But uh, this is three kilograms or 6.61 pounds. It's not ungodly thick either. So if you want to talk huge, you're talking the MSI Titan series gaming laptop, right? And that's what this goes up against and gets similar performance numbers. So that is an accomplishment right there because this is about, what, three pounds lighter and a lot smaller. And the beauty of Ryzen is that it runs more efficiently, is it uses a lot less watts than Intel's doing. It's also, you know, it's a smaller nanometer process, so it's more efficient in that respect, but less heat, less noise. So this is one of the few gaming laptops that doesn't make super loads of noise. I don't want to just reach for the headphones, phones. even surprisingly the MSI Titan, which is a lovely high-end honker of a gaming laptop, uh, is a lot louder than this. So. Ryzen is continuing that tradition of giving the most possible performance without being Titan level priced and without the heat and the noise. Not hot to the touch anywhere. Uh, playing games, not throttling. Seeing the CPU in the 80s Celsius is just a good thing. 
And of course, the RTX 4090 in this 16 gigabyte is going to be a strong performer at 175 watts as well. So if you're looking for performance first and not the posh looks of, you know, a razor blade or something like that, or the $4,300 Titan, who cares how much it weighs and how much it costs? Well, this is certainly a sweet spot. When it comes to games and benchmarks on this, I didn't see a huge difference. But they did say, you know, to feel like 15% difference. So that's not an immense difference. It's important to them when they're competing versus Intel, where even like, you know, a 10% improvement is still, look, we beat Intel, yay that, you know, and we're a little bit faster as we do this versus the non-X3D version of our own super high-end CPU. Uh, but in games, I noticed frame rates were just a little bit better sometimes compared to the standard edition of this that we already reviewed. In benchmarks, pretty similar in Geekbench 5 and Geekbench, Geekbench 6. Slightly actually lower in Cinebench's multi-core, but really a tiny bit different. So you don't expect that this is going to make this the SCAR 17 that you just bought three months ago, obviously, it's not that, but you're just getting the most bang for your buck. And as more applications take advantage of that 3D cache, potentially you might see more performance improvements. Other things to note about the processor, just like the non-X 3D version of the CPU, you have 16 cores, 32 threads, and you've got the same clock speed here, 5.4 gigahertz is your max turbo speed, and so you're not seeing a drop down, which used to be the case with some of the desktop versions of these processors. It's 55 watts, though most of the time it's not going to have to draw that. It can draw even more, but typically in games I didn't see it needing nearly that much to get exceedingly high frame rates. I mean, when you're looking at 212 frames per second playing Tomb Raider QHD resolution, the highest settings, you know, it's like, that's good enough for me. You only got a 240 hertz, 3 millisecond display on board, which is IPS, by the way, no mini LED or anything, again, fancy like that. This line doesn't get those things competent enough display. Speakers on this, uh, just like the previous one we reviewed, but still worth mentioning because they're better than average for a gaming laptop. Where gaming laptop speakers typically are surprisingly bleh. These actually sound pretty good with some separation, some volume, and some bass. Competitors for this would be the Alienware 18 inch, obviously. The Titan sorta, but like I said, that's a lot more expensive and a lot bigger, but still it is at the top of the range. And again, it says something that this can compete in terms of performance. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this video.